did I ever rule on that issue? You said that you would do it later as it came Okay, in. well, here's the thing. Later is now. I got a jury in the box, so okay. you could have asked me that an hour. I mean, we had time this morning. I could have gone through that this morning and made clarity on it for both sides. So I wish that the court would just follow their own instruction. Well, I, I'll follow my instructions when you all bring to my attention what you need to in a timely manner. Hey yo, so I know you know that the trial for Young Thug, the Grammy Award winning rapper, is going on. He's also known as Jeffrey Lamar Williams, and he's currently being accused by the Georgia State and prosecutors of leading a criminal organization, a criminal enterprise. They got your boy Young Thug on a RICO charge, gang. So today we're looking at um, some of the highlights and some of the key moments from day one going into day two. And as you know, Young Thug was arrested on gang-related charges under the Georgia RICO Act. Um, prosecutors allege that Young Stoner Life Records, YSL, a record label and rack collective, is actually an illegal gang called the Young Slime Life. And Young Slime Life, according to the prosecutors, has been involved in many criminal activities all throughout Georgia. Now, this is the law of the jungle, as old and as true as the sky. And the wolf that shall keep it may prosper, but the wolf that shall break it must die. As the creeper that girdles the tree trunk, the law running forward and back. For the strength of the pack is the wolf. And the strength of the wolf is the pack. So Young Thug is actually facing eight charges, bro. With the prosecutors considering him as the leader of the YSL gang a gang which is accused of murder, robbery, assault, extortion, etc. The gang reportedly started back in like as early as 2012. Now the trial commenced kind of rocky. It had a really, <laughs> really rocky start, son. Like there were delays because of the jurors. There were delays because of prosecutors bringing up stuff that the defense didn't see and the lawyers and the, the the judge had to go back and forth i actually talked about it in my previous coverage of this case if you want to check it out you know what i mean but moving forward with that rocky start one of the uh, prosecutors started off with a poem son she started off with a poem to symbolize YSL's operation as a gang. Young Slime Life came about and consisted of three or more people when it began. Three or more people who were willing to and who did commit criminal street gang activity, that is crimes, that were intended to further the purposes and advance the directives of YSL itself. So YSL, as the evidence will show, they didn't move individually. The members and associates of YSL, they moved like a pack. With the defendant Jeffrey Williams as its head. Their members commit crimes on behalf of the gang. They commit crimes such as armed robbery, hijacking, motor vehicle theft, theft by receiving, stolen firearms, so many stolen firearms, possession of a machine gun, and narcotic sales. And last but certainly not least, murder. You're going to hear that this gang stole at least three lives from this community over the last 10 years. At least three that are referenced in this indictment. You'll find that as a result of this gang's activities, a young woman who had nothing to do with either YSL or any of their opposition was gunned down by people trying to get back at YSL for what they did. You'll hear evidence that after the murder of Donovan Thomas, no less than 50 shootings occurred over the course of the next several months. 
So this prosecutor, her name is Love, right? And she outlined the charges against YSL. She also took the time to explain what a RICO charge is, because, you know, that's actually really complicated, and there's a lot more to it than just, you know, what you may know about the mob bosses. You feel me? So she explained the patterns of the illegal activities of a gang and what it is that YSL was doing to make them be considered a gang, at least through her eyes, right? The evidence is going to show that the defendant Jeffrey Williams' words and actions also betray his participation in the conspiracy. He rented a car, which happened to be a silver Infiniti sedan, that other YSL members, among them Diamante Kendrick and Shannon Stilwell, used when they openly and notoriously gunned down Donovan Thomas on January the 10th of 2015. I expect yet another YSL associate will come in here and tell you that Jeffrey Williams paid them money, gave them money to go to Miami and lay low in the wake of the Donovan Thomas murder. Vicky on Garlington, who isn't before you for your consideration today, but who is in fact a YSL associate and co-conspirator of these defendants. He posted a video of the defendant, Jeffrey Williams, looking into the camera and saying these words. So, I think they lie to their mama, lie to their kids, lie to their brothers and sisters, and then get right into the courtroom and tell the God's honest truth. Don't get it. Y'all need to get killed, bro. That's from me and YSL. The defendant's words tell you that there is an enterprise and their actions during the dates that are listed in this indictment are what we are asking that you pay close attention to and you evaluate. Right. Do you have an objection? Yes, sir. Basis. Motion. Ladies and gentlemen, this is one of our breaks. I'm going to need to probably put, ask you to retire to your headquarters during deliberation room and we'll call you back in just a minute. All right, Mr. Steele, what's your, what's your motion, sir? Your Honor, last week, two weeks, three weeks ago, you ordered the parties to share all of their displays an opening statement to the others so we don't have to have these interruptions. I did that. The state shared with me four attachments. That's all they had. That's what I got. What you just saw on your screen, if you don't remember, I'll ask the state to put up and I asked for it to be marked as exhibit, is what you already excluded. It states that Mr. Ryan was convicted of murder and I represent the co-defendant who's not on trial on the appeal. How did that not get sent to me so I could bring it to this honorable court's attention? One. And two, how do we just violate court orders? So, yes, I have a serious motion for a mistrial because it's intentional misconduct. Yeah. OK, so Brian Steele, who represents young thug, Mr. Williams, says love just showed slides that he never saw. And there was something in her slide that wasn't supposed to be in there, namely that he's representing Rodalius Ryan in another case. The jury shouldn't have seen that. It says this is grounds for a mistrial. The jury can't unsee what they saw. Well, Judge Euro Glanville, he denied the motion and he said, look, I'll provide an instruction to the jury that will correct the record. Apart from all that, there were trials in the trial, you know? There were issues in court that led to various disruptions. Some of these were objections to the prosecutor's PowerPoint that was presented and some disagreements about the evidence that was presented. All right, Mr. Matthews? Yes, Your Honor. Good morning, Mr. Court. I'd like to uh, direct the state's attention to slide 15. In slide 15, uh, the third bullet point, number 2, the quote in the indictment is different from the quote in the article. So that's two errors in slide 15 pertaining to Mark Williams Hugh. In the state's opening presentation, the date they have is October 1, 2020, but in the indictment, that particular overt act is November 16, 2020. So that's a, a third error in the uh, state's opening uh, slide presentation. So those need to be corrected to mirror the indictment. On behalf of Mr. Stilwell, um, slide number 47, um, it suggests that Mr. Stilwell is still committing crimes on behalf of the gang, even after being indicted on these charges. And my understanding was that anything that you had not ruled upon, we were not supposed to uh, reference or discuss in opening statements. So those are clear references to um, unindicted charges that we did not get a ruling on its admissibility yet. Do I have any further objections? Are there any further objections to the state's PowerPoint? Your Honor, I was unaware that there were changes. I apologize. No one 
told me that and getting the email to that. Or text I told you all to do that during lunch. That was my last conversation with you all before I went ahead and broke for lunch. You know, you all don't listen to the court, and, I'm, and it's going to get you all in a lot of hot water. You need to listen to me when I tell you something. And don't rely upon your own understanding. These jurors are waiting back there. We are dallying out here. So, you didn't follow my instructions, Mr. Steele. I, I mean, that's what I asked you all to do. I asked you all to share each We're already behind to begin with. Any further objections? And on slide 10 and 13, they misquoted the Instagram post. I get, they misquoted them? Yes, they did. It says, I bet YSL make the news tonight. That's not what the Instagram post says. Your Honor, we actually copied the Instagram post into slides 10 and 13. And it does not say tonight. I'm sorry. Okay. I will take out the word tonight. He's right. She mentioned 191 overt acts that will be proven in trial indicating YSL as a gang. Yo, that's a lot of bullets to dodge, bro. I don't know how they're going to do it, but we're going to see if they're going to do it. Next in prosecutor Adrian Love's opening statement in day one of the Young Thug Rigo trial, she moves on to this controversial piece of evidence in this case, rap lyrics, specifically Williams and co-defendant Diamante Kendrick's lyrics, to be precise. Now, the judge previously ruled that 17 sets of lyrics can be used as evidence. Now, this didn't come without a lot of blowback from First Amendment advocates and defense attorneys. Does this stifle or violate someone's freedom of speech and artistic expression? It's a fair question. I mean, there's already been criticism that rap lyrics in general are predominantly used against black defendants in trials. But Fulton County DA Fonnie Willis, who is overseeing this prosecution, has said, quote, I believe in the First Amendment. It's one of our most precious rights. However, the First Amendment does not protect people from prosecutors using lyrics as evidence if it is such. And that idea was echoed by Prosecutor Love when she told the jury that they weren't chasing the lyrics, they were chasing the murders and found the lyrics. Lyrics that have an uncanny similarity to very true and very real and quite specific events, as the evidence will show. Jeffrey Williams' words that he promotes through songs with beats behind them, they aren't random. He tells you as the evidence will show. Take this to trial. I rep my life for real. For slimes, you know I kill. Trial, I done beat it twice, Kendrick. I'm undefeated like feds came and snatched me. I don't know, no point in asking. I was on what? Believe it. Stuck like a magnet. I shoot at your man, you need to stand down. I up my stamina, take it to trial. Get an appeal, take it to trial. Yeah, you gonna whack him. Pay for that casket, that's just if we whack them. My young <laughs> pulling up. Bentleys, Austin Martins, Rares and Teslas, strap with an FN. You're gonna get a lot about the FNs. Watch me whack that. <laughs> Pop them like a cyst. Glock with the assist. Incidentally, the gun at the home of Jeffrey Williams on May of 2022 that had been modified with that switch, it was a Glock. He tells you, we committing them crimes. Hop out and shoot. Roll one up for the game. He's not using game colloquially. The evidence will show he's telling you they are a game. So the defense started off with the attorney, Matt Sharp, who's representing Shannon Stilwell, right? And um, he's one of the defendants in the YSL case. And attorney Sharp, he emphasized that Stilwell's actions were for personal gain. The state has alleged in their over acts Okay, these are acts that they claim prove that there's some RICO conspiracy afoot. You'll hear that on August 23rd, 2013, Jenna was charged with possession of marijuana with intent to distribute approximately one ounce over 10 years ago. And you'll hear here that he pled guilty and did his time. You'll hear that in September 25th of 2019, he was arrested and charged with possession of a firearm. And he took responsibility and he did his time. We're not hiding from the fact that Shannon Stilwell has no drugs. We're not hiding from the fact that he's been found in possession of marijuana. We're not hiding from the fact that he's been found in possession of a firearm, which is always synonymous with selling drugs. <coughs> these are his, these are his path, his past, his truth, and they were his decisions. His motivation was to make money for him, to live, to pay rent, to eat. Ladies and gentlemen, we're not hiding from the past, but the evidence will show that Shannon's decisions starting over 10 years ago 
had nothing to do with YSL or any other organization. You won't hear evidence that Shannon was selling marijuana and then calling someone from YSL saying, hey, I got some money to, to support the organization, or calling Jeffrey Williams and saying, hey, I got some money for you, man. No, it was for him. He was a drug dealer. He pled guilty. He did his time. Not for YSL. This, like, it's like a crazy angle he's trying to spin, but everybody's trying to distance themselves from YSL as a gang. Like, they're not trying to, like, disown the past and say they didn't do this, that, and the third. But they're saying whatever they did do was for their own betterment. You feel me? So you can't try to bring us in on a RICO charge because we wasn't doing it for the furthering of the gang. You feel me? So that's where most of these lawyers are probably going to come from. But Attorney Sharp, he definitely was the first one to do it. That is an important theme. Trying to distance yourself away from the alleged gang. Talking about important themes in this case, this for the defense, I imagine we will hear that more from other defendants. Now, Sharp also focused upon the state's case, and particularly the murder charges, and how informants cannot be trusted. That they are looking to make deals and say whatever they have to say to prosecutors and to law enforcement to make that happen. And he highlights one particular situation that is very interesting concerning the murder of Donovan Thomas. Detective Thor is the Atlanta Police Department detective that was assigned this case in January 2015. And you'll hear that he, that he gathered the evidence from the crime scene. There was no DNA, there was no fingerprints of value, and there were no eyewitnesses on January 10, 2015. On October 19, 2015, nine months and nine days after the Donovan, Donovan Thomas shooting, a man named Nicholas Robinson was arrested on the streets of Atlanta, brought to Fulton County Jail for various pending charges. And you will hear evidence that Mr. Robinson decided he needed help. So we'll hear that he contacted Atlanta Police Department and got in touch with Detective Thorpe. And Detective Thorpe came out and interviewed this Nicholas Robinson. That Nicholas Robinson told Detective Thorpe that he saw it all, that he saw the people that were inside the car, and he gave names. Nicholas Robinson said, I saw Antonio Sledge. He came out of the sunroof shooting. I saw Kenneth Copeland. He was in the front passenger seat. I saw Demetrius Garlington. He was the driver of this car. But Gary Zachary, he wasn't there, but he supplied the gun to Antonio Sledge. And yes, I saw Shannon Stillwell, my client, in the back, passenger side, shooting a handgun. The defense also questioned the credibility of some of the informants and highlighted that this RICO case is just way too complex, bro. Like, there, there are too many complexities in a RICO case for you to just simply sum this up as a RICO case. I've come to learn that your name is not actually Nicholas Robinson, is that right? Could you look at these photo lineups again? And instead of writing a fake name, Nicholas Robinson, could you actually sign your real name, Spencer Wright? And Spencer Wright did. The surveillance video that you will see, it's interesting. And know who's in the barbershop, know who's in the park bench, the bus, Marta bench, across from the barbershop? No one. It was all fabricated. It was all made up. It was all a lie. So, I don't know, yo. All of this here is just to sum up some of the stuff that happened on day one. Just a quick summary I wanted to break down for you. I'm going to get into day two and I'm going to do the rest a little later. If you like how it's going, drop a like, drop a subscribe. If you like my drawings to the art, yo, do the same. Put a paintbrush down below so I know that you art related. Thank you and have a great day.